We try to bring you high quality educational and informational content every single day. Why do you think the price is having such an anemic time? The new story of the hour. Is this the beginning of a massive financial unraveling? We gotta add a little addendum to the show map today. So we start here on the daily. Now we've been looking at the RSI on the Bitcoin's daily chart for the last several days. Well, it's been increasing over the last 50 years since the world. The government Hey guys, what's going on? Jeff here and welcome back to Coffee and Crypto Live. This is your week daily morning show where we bring you the latest in everything Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about the do or die moment that is showing up for Bitcoin right now. There are two major scenarios that could be playing out next week. I believe one of them will likely play out next week. One of them involves a drop down to as low as $38,500 and the other involves a rally which will kick off next week bringing us to 50. Today, we're going to be talking about which one of those scenarios is more likely to occur and we're also going to be bringing you guys some updated information on our plan to make hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars during this bull market and I want to show you guys how you can do exactly the same thing. I just had a wonderful year. 2023 has been absolutely incredible. We built a lot of great things. A lot of wonderful things happened to our family. A lot of wonderful things have happened to the channel. And today, we are going to be looking back and also looking forward on what 2023 has brought and what we think is going to happen in 2024, focusing on how we can make 2024 the very best year of our life from a financial sovereignty, a financial a cryptocurrency uh, point of view perspective. And we're going to be walking away from today's stream with a far better understanding of how to make our lives better Moving on into the year of 2024. This is the last Coffee and Crypto live stream of 2023, and we're going to celebrate a little bit. Really excited for all of you to be here. So let's go ahead. Bowler, your Philly Skills 1428, Victor Sleeps, Nicholas Aquariums. Nicholas's Aquariums is in chat. Happy Mac, John Douglas, Crypto Mini Bike, Kunky Bunk, Baltronic 80s in chat. Kenny M is in chat. Sachet 321s in chat. John Douglas, One House Productions, Mario Roke. Crypto Ohio, Kenny M, Crypto Mini Bikes, that definitely a very happy New Year's um, to all you crypto fam. May 2024 and 5 be prosperous. Hashtag Fensov. Grandmaster Roulette in chat, Allen in chat, Rave Song Records in chat, saying live from Chicago. Good morning, Chicago. Good morning, Chicago. Marley 120 Thirst is in chat. Abadur Serenabat is in chat. Prediction on Chainlink north of 100. Uh, Get Right Media. Anum Posta 23, War Turtle, Grand Roofing Incorporated, Bitcoin Training, Crypto Military Vet, Justin Moore, and Peter P is in chat. Good to see all of you. Let's go ahead and get started. We've got a lot to cover, so let's jump into it. Bitcoin's trading at 43 grand. It is currently sitting at $841 billion in market capitalization. I believe this time next year, that number will be double where it is right now. We are up 0.8% in the last 24 hours on a small pump. We'll talk about that here in a second. Ethereum has rallied 2% this week. A uh, major rally happened back on Tuesday, bringing it up to about 2375. That's exciting news for sure. Binance has gone through a rally. Binance Smart Chain, Binance Coin gone through a rally. It's up at 317. Solana at 109 right now after a major correction from 118. It has actually started a new rally and it's up almost 10% in the last 24 hours once again. XRP sitting at 63 cents. Dono is sitting at point, uh, uh, sitting at uh, 62 cents, doing very well for itself. Cardano has been trading sideways for a time here. It is consolidating and getting ready because there are major, major things coming to Cardano. In case you guys didn't know, the TVL on Cardano is absolutely looking very, very good. Over here on DeFi Llama, you can see there's currently $400 million in total value locked. At the beginning of 2023, there was $54 million in total value locked. We're going to be doing a lot of that, looking at where the markets were a year ago today and where they are now. And we're actually going to look 
and how the channel's been doing over the course of the year. But as you can see, to the right of my cursor has been the year of 2023. And it has been almost nothing but up on the total value locked on Cardano. A lot of the decks is over here performing very, very well. Over the last month, Indigo up 60% on TVL. Men Swap up 60%. Liquid up 60%. DJed is up 60% as well. A Starter is up. Um, Muesli Swap is up 50%. V uh, Vi Finance is up 64%. A lot of great things happening here in Cardano's ecosystem. I rallied to $316 million in TVL, but right now Cardano is sitting at all-time high. Very excited to see that. But it's not just Cardano that's performing very well. Avalanche has been doing relatively well. There's some mix-up with the board over there and some of the employment. So we want to kind of look into some of the fundamentals on that before we get too bullish on it. But if you are still interested in Avalanche, it is on a major correction right now. So there is a buying opportunity there. Polkadot doing very well. Up 7.8% in, uh, in the last seven days. On a bit of a correction right now. Not a bad entry. Polygon sitting at a dollar. Very excited about that. It's up over 18% in the last seven days. Looking at the... Uh, all chart here at the all chart here you can see that polygon it's all-time high is up here around three i think you're gonna see that happen i think you're gonna see us go back to all-time high if you look here on market capitalization market cap all-time high is about uh, 19 billion dollars i do believe that that is going to continue i think we're gonna recapture that all-time high and even if we look at Matic here for a second on the chart, one of the things you're going to see, I'll go look at the market cap chart. The price action chart shows us something similar, though. If you look at the market cap chart here, we have recently <clears throat> broken this downtrend, this downtrending level of resistance. If we look at Matic over USDT now as well, you're going to see a very similar thing has occurred. We've broken above this downtrending level of resistance, depending on whether you're on log or reg regular chart. Doesn't really matter. We've broken above that. Even on the log chart here, we're starting to break above that by rallying up to $1. So Polygon looking phenomenal. Great picks moving into the new year. And that's kind of what I want to talk about. We're moving into 2024. What do we want to see? Well, we want to see some strong portfolio. Uh, we want to see some strong projects to invest in. I'm going to get the chat up over here so that I can see you guys on my phone while I'm talking here. But moving into the new year, I'm looking very strong. I'm looking very uh, bullishly at Bitcoin. I'm um, obviously I'm looking very bullishly at Ethereum. I've got a lot of a, I've got a very bullish outlook on Cardano. Uh, relatively bullish outlook on Solana. I have some concerns, but I do think it'll recapture all time high. XRP very bullish on it. I think our XRP will at least double. Some people are saying like fifteen dollars on XRP. I'll believe it when I see it. We didn't go to all-time high last year, but I think that a lot of that had to do with the SEC. I'm definitely loading up on it. It does have a history of being in the top three. And I think that that could definitely come back. If that did come back, that's a 3x on XRP from current levels, probably more like a 5 to 10x based on future market capitalization levels. Avalanche, we want to do some more research into it. There's some thud around Avalanche right now that seems pretty severe. Not going to get into that today, but we do just want to kind of put a yellow light on Avalanche right now until we have figured out exactly what the future looks like on Avalanche. Dogecoin and Sheeb, I've got a little bit of that just in case they pump off. Pump up, not really too worried about it. If they don't, it's not a very large position. Uh, Chainlink, looking great. I think Chainlink could go to over $100. I think this project's going to absolutely kill it. If we look at the all-time high, it's up here at 51. I think it'll double it. I think it'll double it. I think Chainlink has the foundational capacity to do so much in cryptocurrency, even beyond what it's already doing. Chainlink is a great pick. Uniswap. People want to knock on Uniswap, say it's last bull market's DEX. Well, let me tell you something. If you come over here to DEXs, it is still number one on Ethereum and number four on Ar um, Ar Ar Arbitrium. I can never pronounce that. Arbitrium. It's still number one up here on trading volume. Okay, so there are some DEXs that we want to look into that will probably perform very well, but Uniswap is still up there at number one. ICP, a lot of potential there. Cosmos, stakes like crazy, like Cosmos. One that I've been looking into, and I think I'm going to get today, Caspa. If you're looking for some of those smaller caps, uh, or maybe you can maybe call this a, a medium cap, you'd have to just kind of decide what you would consider a medium cap. Caspa, pretty excited about that. It's up 15% in the last 24 hours. Going to probably be getting some of that today. Very excited about Caspa. I think it's going to perform very, very well this bull market. So let's talk a little bit about this make or break territory for Bitcoin because something is about to happen. I believe that we're about to see a major, major movement on Bitcoin, and I would really like to see uh what you guys think is going to occur. If you guys are enjoying today's stream, do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and hit that post notification bell so you won't miss a single episode going into the new year. Really quickly, I don't do this very often, but I do want to just plug the video that we uploaded yesterday. Got a ton of views. You guys really loved it. And 
If you haven't watched this video already, I would recommend you go back and watch it. It's, it's called My Exact Plan to Make Millions in Crypto in 2024. I want to make it very clear. There is a way that you can reliably, I think, I could be wrong, but I believe there's a way that you can reliably make 5 to 10x relatively simply moving into the next year. If you invest $10,000, I think you could be seeing 50 to 100. If you invest $1,000, I think you'd be seeing 5 to 10. If you invest $100,000, I think you'd be seeing half a million to a million dollars. I think you could be seeing that. And so I'm going to lay out in that video how we plan to make millions of dollars in the coming bull market. And I would love to see uh, if you guys agree with that plan, if there's things that you would change about that, I would love to hear your feedback on that. So make sure to check out that video if you have not already. Let's jump on to some Bitcoin, though, because we got a lot to talk about. Bitcoin has been following, just kind of in the, in the sense of looking back to looking forward, Bitcoin has been following this uptrend all year. We're actually going to go onto a clean chart and uh, <clears throat> analyze this, a cleaner chart anyway. Bitcoin has been following this uptrend all year, and this uptrend was set back here in March. Back around mid-March, we made a video predicting that at the end of 2023, Bitcoin would be trading between $35,000 and $50,000. And that chart that I made for that video is right here. We predicted based on this uptrend and based on multiple other factors that Bitcoin would be trading between $35,000 and $50,000 by the end of the year. And well, the end of the year is here. This is the last stream for the year. This is the box that we drew nine months ago. And this is exactly where Bitcoin has ended up. If you would like to go back and watch that video, it is, uh, let's see if I can find it. This video right here, a clock will send Bitcoin to $50,000 Bitcoin price prediction. Funnily enough, it's got 50K views and it says 50K Bitcoin. So go back and watch this. This is nine months ago. You can see in the thumbnail, see that little box right there? That one right there? That is this exact chart. This chart was the background for that thumbnail right here. Our prediction was 35 to 50. It came true. That's where we went. And a lot of it has to do with this uptrend. And a lot of it has to do with the principles of technical analysis. If you guys don't already know... Technical analysis is our foundational tool that we use to predict what's going to happen next on markets. It is so important that we follow the principles of technical analysis and that we understand technical analysis so that we can profit in this space. Following this uptrend, Bitcoin has landed here between 35 and 50. And so now I want to look in, now that we have some historical context, on the hourly chart and see what happens next. Well, there's two major scenarios that are potentially going to play out here. Number one, Bitcoin may break below this uptrending level of support, which it has used as support for the duration of the year, falling back to a floor at $38,000. That's why I say that a drop of nearly $5,000 is in the cards. A drop down to 38k would be a 10% drop, uh, just a little bit over a fourth, uh, just a little bit over a $5,000 drop from where we are right now. 42.8 down to 38, that'd be a $4,800 corrective movement. Why that number? Well, if we go over to BTC one exclamation point, we're going to see the Bitcoin futures. There is a CME futures gap that sits right here with a bottom, a floor at 39.1, and then going back to our actual uh, Bitcoin price action chart. The reason that we say down to 38 is because 38 is the general resistance level that we had set back here. It was the local high that we set over and over again. We were testing 30, uh, 38,000. We eventually broke bullish out of it, and now we are in this trading range. If we bring up our VRVP, the visible range volume profile, then you're also going to see that that is the beginning of a huge bulwark of support. If we fall below this uptrending level of support, there's almost nothing to catch us until we get down to 38. Because of those factors and because of the daily chart, which is currently showing us quite a lot of bearishness coming from MACD. MACD is very bearish. It's uh, pointing straight into the ground. We've got a lot of MACD divergence, uh, bearish divergence. RSI, similar story, setting lower highs, lower lows. We're, con we're concretely below the 14 interval moving average. Price action chart, just removing our drawings here for a second. Uh, price action chart does not look exactly the most healthy. We've got several red candlesticks in a row. We've got three gigantic red candlesticks right here. Every time we have a green candlestick come in, comes in, a red candlestick comes in and just kind of deletes the gains. And we're pushing very, very powerfully into this 20 exponential moving average. We're basically sitting right on top of it, threatening to break below it. We've set four wicks below it. We punch below the 20 daily exponential moving average, which acts as our critical market structural support multiple times four times in the last four days. Literally every single day for four days now, we've punched into that support. That's not something that we were doing back here in October, November. That's not something that we were doing a lot of even earlier on in December. But right now we are hugging that support. And one of our principles of technical analysis is that the level that you are closer to is the level you're more likely to break. Seems tautological, but most principles 
are, right? Okay, so bearishness, I think, is uh, a little bit more understood. So we've got our bearish strength right now, and we've also got our level. That's kind of, when I do technical analysis, that is essentially what I look at. I look at which faction is stronger and what levels of support or resistance are in play and where might we see Bitcoin moving next. Right now, 38 to 39.2 is the level that I'm paying the most attention to, and the bears are showing me quite a lot of strength. So I'm leaning more in the direction from a technical analysis standpoint that we will see a drop down to 38 to 39.2. That is one scenario that we're going to talk about in a minute. Let's go ahead and talk about the bullish scenario, though. On the bullish scenario side of things, we have not yet dropped below the 20 daily exponential moving average. We had a massive rally over here, and Bitcoin has managed to go through a corrective movement for about a month. And if we look at the technicals down here, MACD and RSI have reset considerably. Um, if they were to start an uptrend from here, this is a strong level that they could build from. This is a level that Bitcoin can do something with. Bitcoin can actually bounce and rally from here. This is a level that we're not super scared of being at. For example, Bitcoin can break above the 14 daily, in uh, daily interval moving average here on RSI relatively easy. And then we could also see a break above on MACD relatively easily. And even if we look here at Lux Algo. Lux Algo has a buy signal. Our most recent signal is a buy signal. We're still under a confirmed buy signal. We've not dropped below the trend catcher yet, but the stop loss is right here between 41.2 down to a bottom of, you guessed it, 38.5. We've talked about how our bottom right now is between 38, uh, 30, let's see. Let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Let's go ahead and clean up our chart here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. We've talked about how our bottom for Bitcoin is this zone right here between 39.1, give or take and $38,000. So we'll just go ahead and draw that right here. We'll draw it as blue for support. It's kind of been our nomenclature here for a long time. Blue is support, red is resistance. And then we can go ahead and draw a rectangular box right here as our support. Boom. Now, if we go ahead and remove Lux Algo for a second, you can see that a little clear, a little more clearly in this Fibonacci. And this. Let's just remove everything. Let's just make it cleaner. How about that? Sometimes you got to do a little housekeeping on your chart so you can actually understand it. So this is our support zone. Ha, ah, that's much easier to see. This is our support zone that we're looking at right now. This support zone is very important because it is the level that we're probably going to go down to. We're going to talk about the bullish scenario in a second, but I'm just going to go ahead and let you know right now I am on the bearish side from a technical analysis standpoint. Hear me there. Please don't miss that. From a technical analysis standpoint, I'm on the bearish side because... We're closer to the support. We're threatening to break it. We've tested it five, six, seven, eight times. That typically means it's going to break. MACD RSI, bearish. Lux Algo is barely bullish. We're getting close to the stop losses. But now let's talk about the bullish side because the bullish side makes me a bull. Right now, I'm a technical analysis bear and a fundamental analysis bull. I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted. I'm moving into the new year. I'm conflicted. I'm not sure what we should do, right? <laughs> a little bit. Got to make up our minds. Sometimes the chart's like that. Sometimes the market doesn't give you clear signals. Sometimes it doesn't give you clear guidance. And you got to kind of discern. So from a technical analysis standpoint, I'm bearish despite the fact that we've got an ascending triangle pattern. And that leads me into the bullish argument. The bullish argument is one that we have not broken below the support yet. We're still holding the 20 daily EMA. We're still above the uptrend level, uptrending level right here. We're in an ascending triangle pattern with a price target which can easily be drawn just like this which would point up here at fifty-one thousand dollars, bringing up lux algo that is above our take profit on the buy signal by the way that buy signal is confirmed that's another portion of the of the of the bullish argument on bitcoin right now and obviously one of the biggest arguments the bulls ha have right now have to do with two factors Number one, the rest of the altcoin space, which is doing very, very well, and the news that a BlackRock Bitcoin ETF approval could be coming next week. Right now, we're looking at January 3rd uh, as, a, um, as a certain date that we want to pay attention to. There is a massive, massive $10 million round of seed funding going on right now. I'll show you in this article. BlackRock reveals plan to seed spot Bitcoin ETF with $10 million on January the 3rd. If we see $10 million in seed capital put into the fund and the authorized participants right here you can see it the APs naming in the filers upcoming S1 updates if they're actually going to be buying the BlackRock seed funded ETF uh, BlackRock Bitcoin 
ETF that they are using their funds to seed fund. And this S1 filing that the SEC is going to be getting in the next 10 days or so is approved. Then that's essentially a BlackRock Bitcoin ETF approval right there. If BlackRock, if, let's see, if the SEC approves this $10 million seed funding round for all of these authorized participants, that might as well be a approval of the entire project, of the entire ETF. The deadline for the first spot Bitcoin ETF approval is January 10th, and some anticipate the SEC approving multiple spot Bitcoin ETFs on that date, including D uh, Galaxy Digital CEO Mac, uh, Mike Novogratz. Funny, I actually was at a conference. I ran into Mike Novogratz. That dude is tall. That man is like very tall. Have you guys ever seen M Mike Novogratz? That man's a giant. Dude's like seven feet tall. He was in the conference room right next to ours. It's pretty cool. I was like, wait a minute. There's a billionaire next to us. Did you guys realize that? You see that guy? That's Mike Novogratz. It's funny what you run into at conferences when you have VIP passes. Anyway, moving right along here. The point is, we're probably going to be seeing an approval next week or the week following. If that occurs, I am of the camp that Bitcoin is going to flipping moonshot. And part of the reason for that has to do with my background in technical analysis. And I'll go ahead and give you some details on that right now. One of the reasons that I think Bitcoin is going to go absolutely para when we see the ETF approval is because we're already so close to all-time high. During the last bull market, when we were at this level, about 65% of the way to all-time high, in this case, it, that was right around like $13,000. And we started rallying up to being within a quarter, uh, within, a, within like, you know, a 33% rally of all-time high. We rallied that far in 20 days. It's a little bit difficult to see on the log charts. Let's just go ahead and show it here. Um, Bitcoin just absolutely went parabolic. Once it started rallying towards all-time high, there was no stopping it because there's this magnetism, right? There's this enthusiasm. Now, something I do want to mention is that this rally back to all-time high after we found support at 10K and just bounced and rallied to 20, there were quite a few fundamental events going on. The pandemic was in full swing. Lockdowns were in effect. People were stuck at home trying to figure out how to make money. Oh, look at this. Bitcoin's up 40%. Let's buy some of that. Where are we going to get the money from? Well, the PIP, uh, the Paycheck Protection Program just came out. PPP loans just came out. So everybody's getting paychecks for not working. They're sitting at home and they're getting that money. Um, they also are getting the CARES Act stimulus check. So they're getting two different kinds of income that they're not actually working for. So they're able to, now as far as they paid the tax dollars for it, so I suppose in that way they did work for it. But the point is, is that they're sitting at home right now, either working part-time, not working at all, taking a paid leave, whatever. And they're looking at the charts and they've got all this money coming in. What are they going to do with it? Well, might as well invest some of it. Maybe we can make bank. Maybe we can make our fortune. Um, this is when you saw Bitcoin getting big on Robinhood. You saw all kinds of different stories back then of people making a, a lot of money investing. And so Bitcoin rallied straight up to all-time high. I think we're going to see another parabolic move. Let's just keep in mind what this market looks like here on the linear chart. It's easy to look at this market on the log chart and not realize that this is what it looked like on the linear chart. This is just, I believe the textbook word for this, and th there's a reason why I like not working in, you know, universities or in some official academy, because I can't use this analogy. This is what we call stupid. Like, this is a stupid rally. 1,750% in just over a year. This is absolutely absurd, right? 600% in 230 days, $55,000. We rallied from 9K to 65K. And all of that started with this just moonshot leg up to all-time high. And I really do believe that we're going to see something similar happen this time. Don't believe me? Just watch. Where's that from? If we look at the same thing, going back farther into the past, into the 2016 17 bull market. Let's look at all time high back here. Bitcoin hits all time high at 1100. Once Bitcoin gets past uh, 770, see right here, right there, you see that? Once we get past 770, Bitcoin just goes on this moonshot rally all the way to all time high. 15 days, we rallied 50%. We corrected right back to where we were, but then you know what happened? We rallied 80% in 56 days, rallied to all time high. Crash, this is like the first major all-time high test of history, just so you know, the very beginning of 2017, because it, it never really happened before. Um, we ended up breaking through the all-time high later, and then we went completely parabolic. This is just, just look at this chart. It's absurd. You can't even see the four years prior to the 2017 bull market. Similar thing, of course, happened here. You can barely see the previous years. I don't think that this bull market were necessarily going to go... 250% above all-time high. We might only go 180 to 200% above all-time high. But let me tell you something. If we go to 200% above all-time high, 
That, my friends, is a $205,000 Bitcoin. If we only go to 175% above all-time high because we start getting depreciate, um, uh, you know, decreasing returns, we're looking at $186,000 Bitcoin. I think those numbers are realistic. And if we do go to that level, that's a 300% from where we are right now on Bitcoin. If Bitcoin 3x is its all-time high, think about what the altcoins are going to do. They're going to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10x all-time high. And you can make between 5 to 10 5 to 10x conservatively on the alts. This portfolio that we're building right now, I believe will grow by 5 to 10x conservatively. I think that you are genu I genuinely think that you're going to see market capitalization in crypto hit $10 trillion this bull market. I think that's going to happen. I know that sounds crazy, but I think that's what's going to happen. We hit 2.8 trillion, almost 3 trillion last bull market. I think you're going to 5 to 10, probably more like 8 to 10. When that happens, huge rallies taking off. And how do we get there? Well, remember what happened. Once we started going towards all-time high, we went there parabolically. So from the longer-term perspective, either next week or the week after when we get the ETF approval, we're probably starting our journey right back up, right back up to all-time high. Or if it gets denied, maybe we crash down to like 30. And then as the halving comes in, then we just moonshot straight to all-time high. These are kind of my two predictions right now. And they all start now. That's why this make or break moment that we're talking about is so important. Because if Bitcoin does crash through the floor right now and drop down to 38, that very well may be just the start. Bitcoin could drop down to 38K, find support, and maybe it bounces and rallies in a month. Maybe that happens. But in keeping with that longer term prediction, maybe Bitcoin drops down to like 30. Could drop down 12, 13, $14,000, down to 31.8 maybe. Maybe we back test the, alt, the yearly high earlier this year at 31.850. Would that be bad? No, that'd be very healthy. I would love to see Bitcoin drop down to $32,000. Would that be sad for a little while? Yeah. Would it be a great entry? Also, yeah, that'd be great. So what do we make of this? Well, again, two scenarios, huge breakout next week, huge crash next week. I mean, I really don't see there being a lot more time in this trading range. Maybe it's the week after. Maybe. I give it like an 80% chance next week. We're going to see some serious... We hit 88 miles an hour. You fill in the blank. We're going to see a lot of movement. We're going to see a lot of movement. And when Bitcoin does see that movement, it's going to be a lot of volatility. And I think you're going to see a multi-thousand dollar movement next week. How do we prepare for that? If you want to trade this movement, there is absolutely a short trade open right here. Easy. Easy short trade. Easy short trade. Entry, uh, a little bit south of $42,000. Exit, play this one by ear because it's actually it's actually not a very far short trade but if you do short it probably an open right here like 41.5 somewhere in there again i'm only advising you to or i'm not even advising you but only encouraging you to think about opening a short trade here if you know what you're doing set up a stop loss like this um yeah short trade just like this that's a 4x risk to reward ratio play it by ear um you know kind of be be uh relatively conservative with how long you hold that short trade just simply because bitcoin is in a prolonged uptrend so you're actually betting against the trend you're betting a new primary trend is starting and that's a pretty risky bet but you could make some money there especially if you're using leverage if you're doing it safely if you do intend to use leverage you can use bybit or apex those are my two preferred leverage trading platforms you can find those with the link in the description box down below fair disclaimer because i care more about your safety than i care about you signing up for lux algo or excuse me than i care about you signing up for bybit or apex even though that does help to support the channel I want you to be safe and leverage trading is a very risky thing. And if you don't know what you're doing, don't touch it with a 10 foot pole. Okay. If you know what you're doing and you want to support the channel, those are two great exchanges to use. If you're not familiar with it, if you do not, if you have not proven yourself to be a profitable trader without leverage, then uh, avoid leverage trading until you really know what you're doing. All right. With that out of the way, a short trade is possible there. And by the way, if you're getting started, never use more than five to 10 X until you've really mastered that before you move up. Don't go balls to the wall. I'm just going to put hundred X life savings. You know what? You just went bankrupt. You know, you just lost a monopoly, except this is real life and people, people's lives are, are kind of <laughs> in play right here. So be careful. Anyway, the second scenario, of course, is Bitcoin breaking bullish here. And ultimately, what I want you guys to know is how do we prepare for both movements because i want you to be an opportunist rather than a soothsayer i don't want you to walk around in cryptocurrency thinking aha i know exactly what's going to happen on every single movement that bitcoin makes i don't want you to walk around with the pride of thinking i know exactly where bitcoin's going to go i'm certain it's going to crash that is pride what i do want you to be able to do because this is something that's actually attainable 
is to be prepared for every outcome. And then when one scenario starts, then activate that plan. Got a plan for shorting? Looks a little something like this. I'm not going to give you the exact numbers unless I see a certain level that seems relevant. But I think you can set this short trade up over here with a 4 to 5x risk to reward ratio. The long trade, you break above this level. In fact, this is Coinbase, so we actually rallied a little too far here. Uh, break above this level, we're going to call it 44,720. So we'll put this level here because we're already on this chart at 44,720. 44,720. There we go. Um, let's say you break above this with a little bit of exuberance. Don't forget your high volume. You need a big volume candle in there. You want to see MACD RSI, very bullish on the 8-hour to the daily chart. Um, Lux Algo is already in play. Then that's where you start going into a long trade. Where do you put the stop loss? Well, Lux Algo is giving a price target right now of between 46.5 and 49.1. I'd put the price target somewhere in the 47 to 49 region. That'll give you a pretty large risk reward ratio. I think you can set that up with a 4 to 5x. Am I going to give you a certain direction that Bitcoin's going to go? Am I going to call for sure it's going to go up or down? No. What I am instead going to do is I'm going to give you a plan so that you can be ready for both scenarios. A short trade and a long trade plan like this uh, will help you to be prepared if we drop or if we rally. Now, from an investment standpoint, if we rally, hold on. Keep dollar cost averaging. If we drop, you might consider adding 10 or 20% more into your dollar cost averaging every week because we're on lower prices. You don't want to double it. Because Bitcoin could drop down to 30. And you don't want to use up all your dry powder up above 38 in case we drop down to 30. You want to have some lump sum cash on the side. You can say, all right, we just dropped really far. I'm pretty confident that a that a large bottom is in. And we're not going to go much further. Then we can put a, a, a lump sum in. But continue the dollar cost averaging either way. And whatever you do, whether we rally or drop, continue to invest in your education of financial sovereignty, that being having control over your finances rather than your finances controlling you. And by the way, please go use that word in day-to-day -day conversation. Spread that word. I want that word in the culture. I don't care if I get credit for it. It's a word that I believe the Lord put on my heart a long time ago to share with you guys. Please go and share that phrase, financial sovereignty, having control over your finances, stewarding them with meekness and wisdom. Um, make sure that you're investing in your education on financial sovereignty, of having budgets, making sure that you're not in high yield, uh, high interest debt, making sure that you are above water and you're not a net worth, you're not in the negative on a net worth standpoint because then you're just on a path to bankruptcy. Make sure you're not putting too much money into crypto. Make sure you got an emergency fund. All of that stuff we talk about in other content, but also make sure you're investing in your education on technical analysis. It's so important that you understand technical analysis because if you don't understand technical analysis, you're not going to be in a position to actually thrive in the cryptocurrency space. And that's what I want for you. I want you to thrive in crypto. And that's why I created the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy over five years ago now, teaching you guys everything that you need to know to hit the ground running in technical analysis. CT2A is the one-stop shop to learn everything that you need to know about technical analysis so that you can go and make wise financial decisions. It'll help you to know when a market's overbought and oversold. It'll help you to know when it's a good time to buy into a market. It'll help you to know when it's a good time to to go into a long trade, go into a short trade. It'll help you to set up those trades. It will help you to understand whether the bulls or the bears are stronger so you understand what the overall trend is. There's over 45 videos in here, over 10 hours of content teaching you technical analysis, which is the single most important skill set you will ever learn to being a successful trader or investor. Many of you guys are primarily in the investment standpoint. I am as well, and that's fine. You need technical analysis. My investments right now are all backed by my technical analysis of the markets. It's very important you understand the markets. I just did a financial coaching call with someone yesterday. They uh, signed up for financial coaching. They had gotten CT2A, and they showed me the notebook. They're like, the notebook here, like I have a notebook right here of all the scriptures I'm memorizing. They show me the notebook. They're like, it's like this thick. These are all the notes I just took on CT2A. I'm only halfway through it. I'm 55% of the way through it. I'm loving it. That was the testimony I got from CT2A in a, in a coaching call yesterday. All right, so people are loving CT2A. I just sat down and had a one-hour financial coaching call with uh, a student yesterday. They're going through it, applying it to their investing and I know you can too. So if you want to be successful in cryptocurrency, consider signing up for CT2A. Links at the top of the description box down below. Let's read some chat. I really want to read some chat and interact with you guys. It is the last, uh, it is the last um, stream of the year. Let's do it. Vanek just releases a spot ETF commercial looking kind of bullish. That's right. That's right. The ultimate shakeout. SEC will postpone the ETF. Maybe. It might happen. If it does, I'm pretty confident that it's going to drop. You need a technical analysis to feel good about losing your money. <laughs> oh, my friend. 
Jeb, what's one of your favorite scriptures on finance? Oh gosh, it's let me pull it up. It's Matthew six twenty four. Matthew six twenty four would have to be it. I'll talk while I'm pulling it up. I um, have it memorized, but it's not. I haven't reinforced it to the point where I can just recite it without making a mistake. Matthew 6, 24. Uh, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon meaning money and possessions. Mammon was actually a Near Eastern god of money and possessions that some of the cultures around Israel worshipped, and so Jesus was using that analogy. Update on investing. <clears throat> That's Matthew 6, 24. Uh, update on investing in Caspa. Looking into buying some today. I think it's going to do very, very well. Higher calling. Bitcoin must go up or go down or sideways. Wow, genius, dude. Hey, listen, here's the deal. I think it's going to drop. I made it. I made that clear earlier. I'm in the camp that we're going to see a correction unless we see that market, unless we see that ETF approved, in which case, yeah, it's going to moonshot. But my goal is not so much for you to come here and know and be able to see the future. That is not the purpose of technical analysis. That is a misconception that needs to be broken down. The purpose of technical analysis is not to see the future. It's to be ready for the future. Okay? If you're learning how to drive a car, learning how to drive a car is not about predicting whether or not somebody's going to drive into you. It's about learning how to drive the car safely so that whether the car trip is safe or if somebody cuts you off, you know what to do in every scenario. We have to dispel with the myth that we are in this for the purpose of being able to predict with a certainty what the market's going to do. It is helpful, and it is helpful for us to look into the market and try and predict where it's going to go next. And we can do that. But the purpose at all times is to understand how to be prepared for any scenario. Justin Eubanks in chat said, yo, at Crypto Jab, good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you. Sir Mugiwara, that's an awesome name, said, love that verse. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's during the Sermon on the Mount. <laughs> massive rally coming in very, excuse me, massive movement coming in next week, I do believe. <laughs> Let's see. Exactly what I've been telling people. Money is going to come, but stick to the plan you made during the bear market. That's right. If you guys want to see our plan, made a video about it yesterday. You can go check that out. Are you on DCA on stream today? Not today because I need to do a little bit more research on a few coins, but going to be uh, doing that DCA here in just a little bit. Could you go into the hypotheticals of what would happen if the SEC doesn't approve the ETF? We fall back on the original plan, which is that Bitcoin probably corrects to at least 38, maybe farther. Um, and then we probably enter the main stage of the bull market moving on a, a few months post having. Right now, Bitcoin is looking like it's going to go back to all-time high a few months before the halving. Historically, Bitcoin normally begins its all-time high run about four to six months post halving. If the ETFs are, uh, are disapproved or denied, I think we fall back on that original plan of a bull market of an all-time high run moving into the later part of the, of the year. Nevertheless, I do think an all-time high run is almost certain this year. $100,000, I would give at least a 70 to 80% likelihood. And I don't think the ETFs are going to be denied. I think they are going to be approved. I think a huge rally is coming. If not, that's fine because I got a bunch of money I want to put into the market and I am I'm totally fine with getting better entries. I'm all for it. I'm not here for uh, taking profits in two weeks. That's not my goal. I don't mind taking profits a year or two from now. I'm okay with being uh, with being patient. All right. Didn't you say you would never invest in Sol because it's not reliable, but now you own a lot of Sol. Solana is a very small portion of my portfolio. And at the end of the day, I don't think it's the most reliable cryptocurrency. What I do know, though, is that the best technology does not win. The most adopted technology wins. And so even if I have concerns about Solana, if people are buying it, it's going to go up. I mean, that's just kind of the way it works. You know, I, there's a lot of people that that didn't buy Tesla because they said, oh, it's overvalued. It's PE ratio is out of control. And, but the issue was, Everybody loved it. And you know what that stock did? It 10 x A lot of people got stuck holding the bag because they say, I don't agree with the fundamentals. I don't agree with some of the fundamentals on Solana. That being said, I think it's going to rally a lot. My goal here is to make some investments that are going to bring profit. And I think that Solana has a very lo uh, um, high likelihood of doing that. Already has already one of the best performing um, assets in the, in the uh, altcoin portfolio that we're building. Let's see. Uh... 
lot of people in chat today. If you guys are enjoying today's stream, smash that like button. I really appreciate it. Uh, we Turtle said, don't forget to like the stream, y'all. More people need to hear this. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Alan said, Cass was in nerding me out. Is it for real? Want to do some more research into it. Just got it on my radar yesterday. I'm pretty excited about it right now, though. Um, but we want to be careful, right? We'll either have a correction soon or hitting 48K, then correct IMO based on history and IMACD indicator. Yes, um, I, I agree. Rodrigo Sultanum said, good morning, Jeb. God bless you and your family. Thank you so much. God bless you as well. God bless you as well. New Year's Eve stream? Probably not. I'm going to be spending New Year's Eve with my family. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, what should we... There's a, I do want to mention that today's stream is also brought to you by NordVPN. If you guys have not signed up for NordVPN, I believe you're missing out. And part of the reason I think you're missing out is because NordVPN is an incredible... Uh, way to protect yourself. There's going to be a lot of gains made in this bull market. I think we're all going to make a lot of money in cryptocurrency in 2024 and on into five and, uh, 25. And if you want to be able to protect those gains, one of the simplest, best, most effective ways you can do that is by installing a VPN. NordVPN is only like five bucks a month if you get the two-year plan, because if you get the two-year plan, you're also going to be getting four months free. You can do it all risk-free with a 30-day money-back refund guarantee if you decide it's not for you. And if you sign up now, you can get that big discount before it ends because that is about that is a Christmas slash New Year's sale. Go ahead and get into that now. Do the lump sum. Don't have to worry about it coming out of your account every month because it's a lump sum. Get it over with. You got it for two years. It's going to protect you for the duration of the bull market. So long as you are actually using it and being safe with your passwords, I'm not saying that you can do like the guy on the LifeLock commercial and put your social security number up there. Dude has social security number stolen 13 times. Don't be ignorant. Don't be dumb with your passwords and everything. You have to still do your part. It doesn't give you a license to be irresponsible, but so long as you're being responsible, many of the different things that can happen that that were not really your fault, like somebody get on, getting in your computer via public Wi-Fi, somebody uh, you accidentally hitting a phishing email, whatever it may be, you're going to be protected from a lot of that kind of activity. So make sure you sign up for NordVPN using the link in the description box down below. That's nordvpn.com forward slash Jeb. You're going to be getting a huge discount for the number one VPN provider in the entire world. That'll also allow you to browse the, browse the internet freely, especially if you're in a nation that restricts your access to certain components of the internet. NordVPN is going to help you out with that as well. I believe in browsing the internet safely and freely, and that is why NordVPN is one of the sponsors of this channel. So make sure to check that out. Did you guys see the red coin chart? Hilarious. You know what? I remember red coin. I remember everybody trying to get me into red coin. Where is red coin? Oh, I wonder. Is it red? Is it RD? It, it's. I remember that. Oh my gosh. I got to see this. What the? Okay. What? Huh? What in the world? What happened? Market. Okay. It's busted. It's borked over here on. It's. Me what? Huh? What happened? Okay. Okay, here's the market cap. The price is, I don't know what's going on here. There's the market cap. 725 million. <laughs> Zero. Oof. What happened to this? 1.86 million. <laughs> oh my goodness. Just a glitch. Not possible. $13 trillion market cap. Yeah, okay. I don't know what's going on there. All right, let's read some chat and then we're going to wrap it out. We got some haters in chat that have nothing better to do than be hating. <laughs> My friend, what's with all the hate? Have you been through CT2A? Have you been through it? Has anybody here been through CT2A? What do you think about it? Good, bad, ugly? What's your honest opinion? Love to hear anybody's honest opinion on CT2A. We've had over 5,000 students go through the academy. They're loving it. So let me know. All right. Uh, let's see. Someone bought a red coin for $400. That's sad. That's really sad. Okay. <clears throat> well, we're going to go ahead and wrap it out. I hope you guys have enjoyed 2023. I hope you're looking forward to 2024. It's going to be a great, great, great 
year for you guys. It's going to be a great year for the channel. I'm really excited about everything that we're doing. Um, the Climate of Crypto series are doing is doing really well. You guys are loving that. I want to get up two of those a week moving into the new year. Um, going to be doing some work on trying to uh, bring that online. Um, just really excited about what the new year is going to bring. Really excited for you guys. And definitely, if you guys need anything from me, you know where to find me here on YouTube. You can DM me on Twitter, supportercryptojeb.com. Make sure to sign up for NordVPN, Lux Algo. Uh, make sure to sign up for CT2A. Links are all in the description box down below. I am going to go ahead and wrap it out. There will be an afternoon video coming up shortly, so stay tuned for that. Before I go, though, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching, as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh, I got a real good feeling.